In today's video, I have another battery charger to check out. This one here is a NICAD and nickel metal hydrate charger that will do AA, AAA, and 9 volt batteries only. Today, we're going to look at the Lido Kala NICAD and nickel metal hydrate battery charger. This charger will charge AA and AAA cells as well as 9 volt cells from 1 to 4 cells compatible with both NICAD and nickel metal hydrate batteries and say AA, AAA and 9 volt and it will charge between 300 and 3000 milliamp hours and here's the the ratings for AA and AAA batteries 500 milliamp charge current and 50 milliamp charge current for the 9 volt batteries it can operate on AC 100 to 240 volts input or also from DC 12 volts from a car lighter. I'm going to operate this on AC 120 volts so I've got my power cord and we'll just plug this in just like that. I have a couple of nickel metal hydrate batteries we'll just put them in the charger and they should start to charge there we go and there's our indicators and basically, it's just a, a charger that will charge double and triple A batteries or a 9 volt battery. Pretty simple. Let's uh, open this thing up and just take a look at the build quality of this unit. See, it's going to be a very, very quick and simple video because there's really not a lot to show on this thing. But it has automatic uh, over current and automatic shutdown. And uh, basically, it's just an automatic battery, a basic automatic battery charger. So for your devices that use AA and AAA batteries, this is a nice, simple way to charge it. The thing I like about this little charger is that um, you can plug it directly into mains voltage. You don't have to use a wall wart. But that's what we're going to take a look at and just see what the mains voltage, how they are charging this. Are they just using a capacitor dropper or do they have a proper switching power supply in here to drop the voltage down? So that we will find out. I think that answers your question right there. We do have a proper battery charger. However, Looking at the, uh, oh, that's the sensing circuits. Okay, I was looking at this wondering, what the heck is this? This is the temperature sensor. I, I was looking down at the board thinking, what the heck is this here? But if we look on the back here, you'll notice that there are some heat sink compound here on the cabinet between the cells. Now, what this is, is this is the temperature sensor. And... I'm looking at the board here and I'm saying, what the heck is this on the board? It almost looks like it's, it almost looks like it's, it, that moisture has been in here, but. But anyway, these are temperature sensors on the board here. Here's our, our AC side. If we look here, you'll see that the AC line here has, has got some isolation here between the, the, uh, the AC line side and the low voltage side. So there's a cutaway here on the circuit board around the AC terminals to isolate, uh, so it gives some physical isolation between the, the high voltage and the low voltage side. So that's actually quite good there. Right down here between, between the uh, mains terminal and these LEDs, you can see that they've cut a, a, a gap here in the board, an actual physical separator to separate the line circuit from the LEDs which would be obviously on the low voltage side I don't know why this looks like it's got corrosion on it, it almost looks like this thing's had moisture on it you know, maybe they're shipping or just sitting around interesting, but it appears to work Got your AC side here, it's fused. There's a fuse in here. Get your filter caps for the the raw 
AC side, 4.7 microfarad, 400 volt, is this one, and this one here is probably the same. Yep, 4.7 microfarad, 400 volt. Here's your switching IC here. This will be the MOSFETs driving this little transformer. A low voltage side here on rectifier here on the DC side. Then that goes to power up the charge controller IC and the, the four charge circuits plus the nine volt circuit. So I'll put this thing back together and I'm gonna put some batteries in it and charge them up and uh, we'll see how well it does the job. These are the battery terminals here for the 9 volt cell. Like to be relatively well soldered on there. Same with the other battery terminals here. These seem to be fairly well soldered. Get my power of the unit up. We'll throw a couple of batteries in here. Let them charge up. We'll check back on this a little later and uh, see how the batteries are coming along, see when they're charged, and then we'll check out the batteries. Even though they say not to charge carbon zinc batteries, hey, what's the worst that could happen? We'll see if it brings these batteries up. Okay, it's been about an hour since I put the batteries on charge. As you can see, it's showing that the batteries are full. Even the the zinc batteries, which you're not supposed to charge. Hey, what's the worst that could happen? They can leak. We'll check the voltage on these. See if the voltage has come up to full. So I only measure 1.4. I doubt whether these have charged. These are typically non-rechargeable batteries. But I got a remote control that they uh, didn't work in batteries in the remote nothing I'll try another set of batteries let's see if they work in this remote yep they work in this remote they did not work in this remote when I had them in this remote before. I'll link the footage in where I was trying these batteries in this remote control yesterday when I was working on that Toshiba VCR. These batteries did not put out a signal and now they do. So it's rejuvenated some AAA batteries. Of course this is not a, an alkaline or carbon sink battery charger. It's a nickel metal hydrate and nickel cadmium battery charger so this is a, uh, a high drain device I think you guys know what this is this is quite rare now because this is a little radio shack fluorescent light yeah may help if the batteries stay in uh, we're gonna see how long this thing runs before the batteries go dead These cells also were very old. They haven't been charged up much. Uh, it's been sitting around in a drawer for many years discharged. So I've charged them once and then I let them discharge and I just charge them up again with this charger. So we'll see how long these things go for. So here we'll start it here at 824 and we'll just uh, see how long this light goes before it goes dead. Well, as you can see, it's still going. Light's still going strong. We're going to time this to see how long it'll go for using these very old nickel metal hydrate batteries that have not been charged in probably 10 or 15 years. They actually came out of, the last time these batteries were used was in an old uh, Minolta Dimage 7 camera that I used uh, about 2004 I think was when I used that camera last and it hasn't been used since and it's just been sitting in a drawer. Still going. 
as you can see by the time here it's been running for quite a while I'm expecting that it's going to go down fairly soon here because the light's quite warm and it seems to be getting a little bit dimmer <clears throat> and generally the way NICADs and nickel metal hydride batteries go is they'll, they'll go and then they just drop off so I've been watching it here and it seems to be it's getting a little bit dimmer than it was I don't know if it's showing up on camera but to my eye it's not as bright as it was there yeah definitely getting dimmer oh it just went out that wasn't me so there we got there we got just glowing just barely glowing you can see it just barely glowing now so that's it the batteries are dead so that's how well these batteries these old energizer nickel metal hydrate batteries charged up now time to throw them back in and uh, charge them up again but anyway that's a quick look at this little uh, Lido Cala AA, AAA and 9 volt nickel cadmium nickel metal hydrate charger thanks for watching